Hello again. Today we're going to be talking about molar conversions. And we're going to start with something easy like donuts and dozens and see if we can work our way into it, get you confident with the math. So before we talk about moles, we're going to start with thing, everyday things that you're used to looking at. So let's take a look at a dozen eggs. A dozen eggs is 12. A dozen donuts, 12. So obviously a dozen eggs is 12 eggs. A dozen donuts, 12 donuts. So it doesn't matter what material we're talking about. When we go from a dozen to a particle, like a single egg or a single donut, there's always 12. And we're going to find the same thing is true in chemistry. So this is our practice run. Now there's another conversion we have to make, which is, let's say we're going from a dozen to number of grams. So I'm going to show you some footage. A dozen eggs actually weighs about 698 grams, and a dozen donuts would weigh 854 grams. So wait a minute, if there's a dozen is 12, why does the weight change? Well, different density, different amount of material, lots of things. Like eggs are different than donuts, so they'll weigh a different amount. And the same thing is going to be true of atoms. Um, then you could ask the question, well, are all eggs identical? Like, can I say that this egg is the same as that egg? No. But you can't say that all atoms are identical either. When you're talking about carbon, there are different isotopes. So if I gave you 2.3 dozen eggs, how many eggs do you have? There are lots of ways to solve these problems. Um, one way is just to look at it and go, well, 2.3 dozen times 12. Some people can do that in their heads. I'm going to give you a couple different methods to show you if you can't do it in your head, this is one way. And my favorite way to do it is with ratios. So I know that one dozen is equal to 12 eggs. So I'm going to make a ratio and say, if I had 2.3 dozen, how many eggs is that? Well, how would we solve this? I've got two fractions, and your math teacher would tell you, cross multiply. So if I cross multiply, I'm going to get x times 1 dozen equals 12 times 2.3 dozen. Oops, 2.3 dozen. Um, so I've got my 1, 1 dozen, that cancels out, and I've got 12 times 2.3, and 12 times 2.3 is 27.6 eggs. And since we're only working with two significant figures up here, and our 2.3, I'm going to round that to 28 eggs. Let's say I flip it around. If I had 90 donuts, how many dozen donuts do I have? There's another way to do this, rather than doing ratios, and it's called factor label. In a factor label system, what you're going to do is start out with the number that you're given. So I've got 90 donuts, which I'm just going to, we'll say 90 DNT for donuts, and you put that over one. Now, I don't want donuts, I want dozens. So if I'm going to get rid of donuts, I need to multiply by a fraction, and I need donuts to be on the bottom of the fraction so it will cancel out. So there's my DNT. So I'm going to factor out these labels by saying that my donuts will cancel. Well, do I know a conversion between donuts and dozens? Yes, I do. I know that if I have 12 donuts, that's one dozen. So if I take 90 over 1 and multiply it by 1 over 12, I'll get my answer. And 90 divided by 12 happens to be 7.5, 7.5 dozen. But up here, I've got 90 donuts, which only has one significant figure. So I'm going to round mine to eight dozen. Could I leave it as 7.5? Sure, it's possible to have 0.5 dozen. So it's a legitimate way to, to handle that. I'm just going to go with a significant figures argument and say, let's round it to eight or round it to seven. Now let's take a dozen and see how much mass it has by looking at this. So if you have 2.3 dozen donuts, how many grams of donuts do you have? So let's take the factor label method again. And I told you we're going to start saying 2.3 dozen is what we were given. And I'm going to stick that over one. Okay. I want to get rid of my dozens because I want to know how many grams am I going to wind up with. So I need to get rid of dozens out of my equation. So I'll put dozens on the bottom of a fraction. 
and now I need a conversion. So if you think back, I told you a while ago that um, each dozen donuts was 854 grams. So 854 grams is one dozen. So my dozens will cancel out and I will be left with uh, grams as my unit in my answer. So what is 2.3 times 854? Uh, it's actually 1,964 grams. Oops, 1,964 grams. Um, but I've only got two sig figs. So I kind of have an issue. How am I going to round this to two significant figures? And I can't. If I try and go to two significant figures, I'll be left with 2,000. So what I'm going to do instead is compromise and say, I've got 1,960 grams worth of donuts. Okay, now, if I flip that over and I'm going to go from grams back to dozens, um, this time I'm going to use my favorite method, which is uh, the ratios, as I said before. So with this, I'm going to say I've got 1,750 grams of eggs. And I need to know how many dozen that is. So it's X dozen. Do I know how much one dozen is? Well, I do. If you think back to that first slide, I told you that one dozen uh, eggs was 698 grams. So I know that one dozen is 698 uh, grams of eggs. X divided by one is just X, so I can short circuit the cross multiply thing and say that all I really need to do is divide 1750 by 698. And if you do that, you're going to get 2.5. Okay. Um, can I leave that answer? Uh, actually, I've got 1750, which has three significant figures. So technically, I should probably be giving an answer of 2.50 dozen. Uh, if I wanted to be straight up on the sig figs calculations there. If you could solve these in your head, go right ahead. But what I'm trying to do is lay down a foundation to say when we get into the more difficult stuff, you're going to need some method to help you through. And I'm hoping that one of these, either factor label or the ratios, will work for you. If you're a visual person, this might help. We're going to put dozen as the central concept of this whole conversion. Because you'll notice in every one of the problems I've given you so far, dozens have been a factor. So we put dozens in the center, and then we say we can go one of two directions. We can either use dozens to calculate particles, or we can use dozens to calculate a mass. And if we use dozens to calculate particles, we're going to multiply by 12. Okay? And if we use dozens to calculate mass, well, in order to do that, we have to multiply by the mass of a dozen. Okay? So going the other way, if I know the mass of something, and I want to figure out how many dozens, then I'm going to wind up dividing by the mass of a dozen. Or if I know the particles to get dozens, I'm going to wind up dividing by 12. So if I got 24 eggs, how many dozen do I have? Well, I take my 24 eggs, I divide by 12, and I get dozens, two dozen. So we walked through how to use this graphical um, approach. And I'm going to use it now in order to show how we could do a two-step problem instead of a single-step problem. Let's say I start you with some number of particles and I want to know what the mass of that, those number of particles is. Well, I can't do it in one step. I actually have to calculate dozens first by going down here and I'll wind up dividing by 12. And then once I know how many dozens there are, I'm going to use that information to multiply by the mass of a dozen. Okay, going the other way, I could say, well, wait a minute, what if I had the mass um, and I wanted to know the particles? I could, let's change colors here for a second, um, instead of just going directly from mass to particles like that, I have to go through dozens. Dozens are a central concept in calculating with donuts and eggs. So first I have to divide by the mass of a dozen, and then I'm going to multiply by 12. Now if you notice something here, you're always going to divide first and multiply second. So you can take that part out of your thought process. It's always divide first, multiply second. The issue is going to be divide by what? Multiply by what? And so we're going to help you work through that. Let's try some sample two-step problems. If you have 1,300 grams of donuts, how many donuts do you have? So if we were going to do 
a factor label approach to this, we would say we have 1,300 grams, and we'd put that over 1, like we always do. But I don't want grams. So I need to get rid of grams, and I need to go to dozens, because dozens are going to be the central concept. They always need to get calculated. So for donuts, do I know a conversion? Yes, I do. One dozen donuts is 854 grams. So my grams are going to cancel out, and I'm left with dozens. But that's not what the question asks. The question is asking for how many donuts do I have? So let's multiply a second time and get rid of dozens and get donuts. So do I know a conversion between donuts and dozens? Yes, I do. 12 donuts is one dozen. Okay. So when I solve this, I'm going to take 1,300 times 1 times 12. When I multiply the top of my fraction, I'm going to get 15,600. Um, and on the bottom, I'm going to get 854. Um, and when I actually solve that fraction, I will wind up with an answer of 18.3, which, because I only have two significant figures up here, I'm going to need to round to... 18 donuts. Okay, so that would be a factor label approach to that. Um, are there other approaches? Sure, you could use your graphical thing. Now remember, I told you that if you're using the graphical approach, you're always going to divide. And if you notice on our first step here, let's change colors, our first step of this two step process, we divided by 854. So we divided. And then the second step of this process, I told you you were going to multiply, and you are. You're actually multiplying by 12 over 1, or multiplying by 12. So let's take another approach, because you know that I like, I like ratios. So let's do a particle to mass conversion. So if I have 225 eggs, how many grams of eggs do I have? Well, I would do it this way. I would say 225, gram, 225 eggs... Um, is equal to um, x dozen and one dozen is equal to 12 eggs. Okay, so why would I do that? You always want to solve for dozens first. Dozens are the central concept. I've said that a whole bunch of times. You have to get that in your head. We're heading toward dozens. And when I solve this, 225 divided by 12 is going to give me 18.75 dozen. So I've got 18.75 dozen, but that's not my answer. I want to know how many grams of eggs I have. So if I know that I have 18.75 dozen, how many grams is that? So that's X grams, um, but I need a ratio. So if I knew I had one dozen, we can go back and say, well, remember, eggs have a, a mass of 698 grams for every dozen. And now I can cross multiply, solve that thing, and get 698 times 18.75 and get an answer of 13,087. 13,087 grams. Now, I can only keep three significant figures. So I'm going to round this off to 13,100 grams, or if you wanted to be fancy, you could say it's 13.1 kilograms. Okay, now I want you to try two problems on your own. See how you go. You've got 140 grams of donuts. How many dozen donuts do you have? And you have 19 eggs. How many grams of eggs do you have? Give them a try. So I gave you two questions, and I said you have 210 grams of donuts. How many dozen donuts do you have? You should have gotten 0.25 dozen. Uh, it's a one-step problem. So if you were having trouble with this, go back and watch the very front part of this video and review how to do one-step problems. Um, in this case, you're going to take your 210 grams, and you're going to divide it by the mass of a dozen donuts. Okay. The second problem was a two-step problem. It said you had 19 eggs. How many grams of eggs do you have? So first you have to calculate 19 eggs is how many dozen eggs, and then how many grams of eggs is that. And you should have gotten uh, 1,100 grams of eggs. Again, it's a two-step process. If you're having trouble, go back and watch the ending part of this video and see how you're doing.